Welcome back, everybody. We are live in your neighborhood, Maryland Heights, at Creepcore Airport, hmm. which is our first question. This is Albert Stix. He's in charge here at the airport, at least in the museum. And well, everything. at least in the museum. Yeah, yeah, Albert, why do they call this Creepcore Airport if it's in Maryland Heights? Well, because we're very, very close to Creepcore Lake, actually. Okay. And historically, this area was called Creepcore, and uh, I think Maryland Heights incorporated in uh, 84. So we still call it Creepcore Airport, though. And it started out, Blair, we were saying, as a flying club back in the 50s. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so Blair loves these planes. She'd like to go up in one of them, but uh, I, I don't think <laughs> we, they're, they're, we actually they're made do. For that. We actually do fly quite a few of these. Now, we used to fly more of them, but uh, with COVID and everything, we're still kind of rebounding back toward a flying museum. But our hope is next year to have about five airplanes flyable. And then every year, hopefully, we'll take five different airplanes and get them flyable. All right, so Albert, we have a vintage aircraft in here. Right. And you all focus on some that were made in St. Louis. So tell me a little bit right. about the favorite aircraft that people come out here and see when they do tours. Well, boy, that's a tough one because everybody comes down looking for something a little different. Okay. But I guess lately, in the last few years, we get a lot of people that want to know about the St. Louis Cardinal, which is over here to the right, okay. which was actually built in St. Louis. This airplane uh, was built downtown in the city by St. Louis Aircraft Corporation, which was a division of uh, St. Louis Car and Foundry, who basically built a lot of the streetcars in the United States. Well, actually, they built streetcars for all over the world. Um, this was an airplane built before World War II. And uh, everybody thinks it has something to do, possibly, it was named after the baseball Cardinals, but there's, there's actually no relation. No relation to that. <laughs> no. It, it's, I hear at least one of these planes was used in a TV show. That's right. We've actually got several airplanes in the museum that were in movies and TVs, but uh, TV series. But one of our favorites is an airplane that was in, uh, the, uh, I think it was episode five, season one of Gilligan's Island, um, and it was called The Spirit of the Bronx. So it's in the back of the museum. And actually, we hope to try and get that flyable in the next few years as well. It's been sitting for a little while. That was the wrong way guy. He yep, the wrong, uh, wrong way Feldman. That's yeah, right. Wrong way Feldman. Classic. Yeah. All right, and yeah. Albert, these are antique uh, aircraft and planes. So tell yeah. me a little bit about the work that goes into restoring them. They look nice. They still look new. Yeah, they they, they are actually. It's getting very difficult okay. uh, because we're really running out of mechanics that can work on these mm. things. There's very few people. We have a bit of a demographic issue with antique airplanes. Looks like antique cars. Um, we're also kind of running out of pilots that know how to fly them mm. because they're a little bit unusual sometimes. But uh, it does take an awful lot of work to keep them going. It's uh, very difficult to find parts for some of the engines. Um, so it can be a bit of a challenge. They're fabric covered, um, mostly made of wood, steel tube fuselages in a lot of cases. We tend to focus on things from about World War I to about 1939. So that's kind of where we focus a lot of our energy right now. Albert, what's your favorite airplane? Yeah, that's a good one. <laughs> well, I think one of my favorites is this airplane behind us right here. This is called a Curtis Robin. This was built over at Lambert Field as well. It looks and like a, a smaller version of the uh, Spirit of St. It Lewis. actually was built about the same time. Oh, was it? Yeah, okay. yeah, actually it is. And it's a, it's really a neat airplane because it's a very, it has a very rare engine. It has an air-cooled OX-5 in it, which is a very rare engine, a World War One derivative engine. And that one actually we hope to fly next year. And we so. can do tours and come out and Absolutely. see this aircraft. Tell me how you set that up. So what we do goes. right now is we're as we're moving into November, we're moving toward uh, our kind of our winter hours. So we're open Saturday and Sunday from 10 to 4. No appointment necessary. And uh, we're usually closed on Mondays. And then Tuesday through Fridays we request about a 24-hour notice. They call the airport and we'll try to get a tour guide arranged. And it's very unusual that we can't get, we can't accommodate a group or a couple people. So we're, that's, that's kind of our, our hours for right now. It's kind of like um, a hidden gem here in Maryland Heights. We think so, yeah. We're not very well known. That's you will sure. be after this. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna change yeah. that. This is at the Creve Core Airport, a beautiful museum with some historic airplanes in Maryland Heights. We are live in your neighborhood. <laughs> 